Y'all, so this is an up close and intimate with me, and it inspires. And my goal was to, well, my intention was to do an IG live so that you guys can be literally with me in the moment. However, you know I have baby Alani and she's asleep right now. So I feel the best time is to basically work around her schedule. So <laughs> I decided to just record a video. And the up close and intimate is just uh, the wellness side of me giving you uh, points on what I feel are important to our community as black women and things that I feel like we should know, recommendations, and uh, I'll point you into resources as well. So we'll be focusing on three things in this up close and intimate today. The first one is why black women matter and wellness. So that's the wellness community as a whole, but I'm telling you why I feel that black women matter in wellness. The second one is I'll be sharing with you hardships as it relates to mothering and being a wife during this crazy time right now. The third thing is I'll be just uh, sharing with some of you and re-informing others of uh, why I feel conversational healing sessions are important right now to our community. All right. Why black women matter in wellness. Being a part of the wellness community as a black woman creates a sense of responsibility to me because I feel that I am responsible for an awareness that needs to be brought to mental health in the black community. I am always holding myself accountable to share my experiences as it relates to mental health and that itself puts me in the place of wellness. Uh, just even on a spiritual level, I feel that We've been taught by people not belonging in our community on how we should live our life, how we should take care of our bodies, how we should handle mental uh, weaknesses that we may have at some points in our lives. And they have not been conducive to our community at all. But when we look and we dig into our roots and we say, you know what, what did our ancestors do? We find more of light workers, we find healers, we find uh, witches, we find so many things that, you know, society has steered us away from. So having black women in wellness, first of all, restores what our community really needs. And it it's just this, this earthiness that, you know, everything that we need is right here. You know, and just thinking on trying to even have the conversation about therapy and as it relates to depression or anxiety or childhood trauma or adult trauma or uh you know just different levels of things that we might need care for mentally and seeing a black woman there tell me that doesn't make you feel better when you see a sister that's there willing to listen she's going to help you she's going to be that genuine authentic shoulder for you to cry on it's so important because yeah there are white therapists and there are other uh you know they do their things their way but in places that you don't want to feel judged we still can walk into those places and feel judged and i think that it's so much more warm and it's so much more welcoming when it's a black woman black women understand a level of the struggle that she can have a conversation with her sister about that other women can't do from other races and it's important for us to have those conversations in a way that empower the community that make us aware again because awareness is very important I'm trying to make sure I hit all the points that matter to me because again this is my opinion I feel that uh, just thinking about my experience and just birthing this fourth baby in July and seeing so many black nurses, but they were here with me. They felt my spirit. They knew how to have proper conversations with me that weren't so uptight and religious. It, it made my heart smile because I needed that in that moment. My anxiety was so high because I missed my kids. Um, I didn't know how I would be treated because we know that black women as it relates to the medical field 
black women going into the hospital and coming home, it's a blessing. Black women having pain and it be taken seriously by a wonderful black nurse, it's a blessing. To come home and recover and still be here to tell my story, it's a blessing because not all of our black sisters get that opportunity. Not everybody gets to leave when their baby leaves. Not everybody gets to leave as a whole. Not everybody gets to leave more than what you came in. And we have to know that life is so precious. And this society takes black women lives for granted just as they do our men. So for me, just letting black women know that Listen, my choice was to go to the hospital, but because I've met other black sisters in wellness, they've introduced me to doulas. They've introduced me to the idea of birthing at home, water birth, natural remedies. Like, you don't have to use these things. And we have to take up spaces. We have to. We have to create those spaces, which is why I am so particular about what I do with Tribe of Sunflowers because... Tribe of Sunflowers, you know, I create spaces for black women. And those spaces are for the success, smiles, and wellness of black women. And in that, the wellness extension is Well Well Black Girl. Because there's a mission that I have in this world. And it's so much more to bring awareness. It is to inspire, empower, and ignite black women to their highest self. And I don't feel that that's possible without having black women in the forefront of the wellness community. Because we understand so much what each other goes through, we empathize, and we share our knowledge. I remember sharing, you know, the idea of just not feeling myself when I was younger and knowing my black mom didn't have certain resources uh, or probably didn't even know what I was going through was depression. Because it was brushed off as, girl, you're going to be fine. You know what? Go get your journal. You probably need to write to release. And the writing was always uh, therapeutic. But those feelings would always come back. So having black women in wellness shows our little girls that, you know what? Help is there. You can be that help. And you can point people to that help. If that makes sense for you guys. But for me, I think that uh, I would not exist right now if it weren't for black women who I found a, just a virtual sisterhood with. Like uh, Lauren Ash, Dion Ivory, Sheila Marie. And those are just the top three of mine off just the top of my head who have um, given me much more than they'll ever know. But uh, they are three black women in wellness who from the work that they do in the community, their podcasts, how they gather the community, how they shape black women, how they help our healing process. We need more black women in wellness. So that's just not on the spiritual realm, that's on the medical professional realm as well. It is so important because we can only care for us the proper way. We can't look for others outside our community to take our health seriously. We do it ourselves first. And then when we fall short, we have our sisters and brothers to look to. All right, so the second thing that I'll be sharing with you is uh, some hardships that I've been dealing with uh, recently as it relates to motherhood or mothering my kids and uh, being a wife. So I'll share the mother side first. Right now I'm having this inner, inner, sorry, inner battle with myself on uh, breastfeeding Alani. So I've been breastfeeding her since the day that she was born and I'm still breastfeeding her right now. But uh, like a week ago, I was like, you know what? I wanna have me a drink. I'm, you know, I know that people tell me to pump and dump, but I'm like, I'm, I'm not one of those to pump and dump because if I put it in my body, I don't want a chance that it's gonna go into my daughter's system. So I'm like, no, I, I'm, I don't feel, I don't know how I feel about that. So because I feel like there's something that I'm missing and I want to drink and all of these other things, just the, the individual part of me, I was trying to wean off of breastfeeding her. So I felt bad about it. I had mommy guilt and I was like, you know what, I want to breastfeed my baby again because 
I know how important it is to give her those nutrients from breast milk that formula cannot give her. Formula is a substitute and it's a generic substitute. So to mothers out there, if you are with child, you're thinking about having kids, I encourage breastfeeding. It's a connection that I have with Alani that I, I, I truly love and I enjoy. It's just a bond between the both of us and it's a moment that she needs me and then I get to put on my mama hat and my mom shoes and my mama person. I get to, you know, pull out my boob and give it to her and soothe her because sometimes she uses it as a pacifier and doesn't even like drink it all the time. But um, it is definitely a benefit health wise and just uh, emotionally it's very comforting to have her and y'all it saves time you ain't got to be getting up getting no bottles ready just plop that boob out give it to her get up birth with changer to everything else it, it's it's a lot easier <laughs> and I feel like maybe I over I overthought about a lot of things as it related to breastfeeding and I kind of compared what my experience might be prior to um, having her based on what my experience was with my other. The inner battle that I was having with uh, breastfeeding Alani, and I implore you to look into all the great benefits that come with breastfeeding, but me dealing with the internal idea of not breastfeeding her anymore is something that I want to do, but I deal with mommy guilt, so that's something that I'm handling. Um, other, another hardship that I'm having is balancing my time between the kids. So I know that it is possible, but it is just something that I have to work on. And then, you know, we have a Johnny who's currently 20 months right now. So having to make sure he feels love, make sure he gets attention, and make sure he has that mommy that he had when he was born up until, you know, me birthing Alani. It's something because he does these things for attention. And then if I feel like I'm not giving it to him, I feel bad. So mommy guilt is a real thing. So I'm dealing with those too. If you have any ways that you feel like you can help me, please drop your comments below. I'm always looking for suggestions and trying to find my own as I go with the kids. <laughs> All right, so as it relates to the marriage, I feel like it's been an adjustment and I feel like having a baby, the first year of the baby's life is very trying. It's similar to the first year of marriage. If you're married, you will know the first year is one of the hardest years, though there will be many roller coaster years throughout your time with your partner, but baby, <sighs> me trying to communicate my needs, my needs are changing. Avery gets confused. He's like, okay, well, you just told me to do this yesterday and I'm doing it, but now you don't want me to do it anymore. So I'm, I'm very shifty as it relates to what my needs are. And oftentimes they'll change based on how the baby is and if I slept throughout the night. And oftentimes I don't get a lot of sleep throughout the night. So I, I've been slacking on communicating to him. So Avery and I both know that communication is very important in our marriage. And the fact that I've been exhausted, I haven't been properly communicating what my needs are to him. So that he can adjust accordingly, which is not fair, but it is something that I am working on with him. And we have conversations and check-ins uh, more so than we used to, but they're necessary. So y'all continue to keep us lifted in prayer that uh, we adjust with the new baby and that our communication continues to just excel. Because we've had great communication and I know we'll get it back. It's just me working things out, you know. And nobody's perfect and you just have to be aware. The last thing is the conversational healing sessions. The conversational healing sessions are something that I facilitate. They are my babies and um, I basically create the need where I see one. And I've done sessions with uh, people in the community and people outside of the community. Uh, right now I'm going to ease back into the physical sessions but they've been virtual since the whole COVID-19. And conversational healing sessions are when I sit down in an intimate space and I welcome open energy for healing or whatever path you're on, it's accountability. It could be um, shifting when change comes into your life. It could be uh, releasing yourself from trauma. It could be a confidence builder. It can be uh, just, I need a break. I just need to talk to us. And it's just in conversation, we find ways for you to vibrate even higher. And in that, you will learn how to deal with yourself, where you are right now in your journey, and your future self. So, listen y'all, conversational healing sessions are 
not the conventional form of therapy that you may use to. I do not advocate to say that I'm a professional licensed therapist because I am not. But I do promote black therapists, therapy for black women, and I will guide you to the right black therapist or group of resources for black therapists for you to find one if it is something that I see that you are in need of and I cannot provide. Everything that I do is in love. I am a sister that just wants to see you win, wants to see you happy, wants to see you healed. So in that I share my gifts with you, I open a space for us to sit down and we talk, we kick back, we cry, we twerk, we, we get mad, we do everything that it is that you need to do to walk out of my session feeling at your best. And some sessions are more than one, you know, it's follow-up sessions because healing may not take place in the first one. Sometimes as you going home and you're doing the soul work, it's 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 a journey. So just conversational healing sessions is something that if you're watching this video, I would love for you to think about. And if you're in a space that you feel like it's fitting and right now you can place that in your life, book a session. I'll provide all the links below. And again, I thank y'all so much. I know this was supposed to be an Instagram live, but Alani is, well, she just woke up and Avery has her, but I, I have to work around her schedule. So you're still getting the content. You're still getting information. You're still getting all the love, the warm hugs, the kisses that I have to offer. Just not live. <laughs> but be sure to like this video, share this video with anybody who you see or know could be you know in need of this information share 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 and you guys know that's what i'm all about i am about uplifting black women and if it's something that you ask me and i have the answer i will share if i don't i will go get the answer and if i have no clue i sing it to somebody who has the answer but y'all be well be beautiful and most of all stay black and stay proud be safe out here in these streets protect black women protect black men and Arrest the motherfuckers that killed Breonna Taylor. Yeah, they need to be convicted. They're still free. And I've shared the links on how you can be of change in your community and communities that you don't even live within for black communities as a whole in the United States. Because we are one. We are one. We are one. <laughs>